was asked to characterize himself, he would always say, I'm well, just a poor Baptist preacher doing God's work. Just a poor Baptist preacher doing God's work. The little people who don't have a chance in this world, help them as you help OIC. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the work of God. We tell you about some of the God's work that he did because of the fires were raging in North Central Philadelphia. Some of you may remember that it was Reverend Solomon who stepped into the fires and doused the flames of the messy of hope and opportunity. We shall help our boys and girls to know that it is not the color of a balloon that determines how high it can fly, but what it has inside of it. So what began as a vision, what began as a fire, had evolved into a movement of major historic significance. The most important argument that I have against restriction of my people and myself is not because I'm a colored man, as proud as I am of being an Afro-American, but because I am restricted as an American from exercising the privileges of an American. Dr. Sullivan said that, you know, I'm going to deal with uh, this principle that uh, every citizen has the right, has the right uh, to compete for a decent job, earn a decent salary, live in a decent home, and to be able to feed their family. And what people needed was jobs. And, and he wanted to focus there uh, for the people who were unemployed and underemployed and uh, people who were on welfare, single heads of household. And that's how OIC got started. In the beginning, at an old jailhouse at 19th and Oxford Streets in Philadelphia, the first OIC opened its doors. If, if you ask Reverend Sullivan what kind of business OIC is in, he'd say helping a person get a job business. So that was the mission to train people for jobs that existed. To help people help themselves so they could become employable, self-sufficient, tax-paying members of the American society. He, he didn't believe anybody should give something to someone. He believed that they should have the opportunity to be put in a position, and that's what he did. I mean, if you really look at the consistency of OIC for the 50 years, not just here in Philadelphia, but all across this state, all across this nation, all across the world, he's been very consistent and the message has been very consistent about self-help. If you give a person a fish, he eats for a day. If you help a person to learn how to fish, he eats for a lifetime. People question uh, that job training program at the old jailhouse. Many shook their heads and said it would never work. But it worked. And that OIC program succeeded in Philadelphia as no other training program in the history of America. And as a result of its success in Philadelphia, it has spread across the nation. And the OIC from Philadelphia, its beginning at that old jailhouse, has become the largest self-help training program in the world. Where are we today in this world? We are talking about how do we get more people access to the job market. So 50 years later, we are talking about the same thing Reverend Sullivan talked about 50 years ago. There are certain principles of equality and citizenship and, and, and opportunity, um, and that if you, are in, if you are innovative, if you use your ingenuity, um, you can make sure that those principles are still relevant in your time. You know, there's all-time high poverty rates, there's all-time high unemployment rates, especially as you look at uh, the underserved communities, the low to moderate income communities. The OIC, I see, plays or will play a vital role in the recovery of those communities. There's always going to be, as far as I know, 
people who, who will need those services. The 50th anniversary uh, could be the uh, relaunching of the, um, both the, the OIC brand and the character of Dr. Leon Sullivan. I think his legacy isn't even, um, hasn't even been realized yet, you know? It's like when you drop a pebble in a pond and you don't know where the ripples go, they just keep going wherever, you know? And I think that's the way it is. And I think that when people try to make judgments about the legacy inside, it, it just, it just shows how little they understand about what it really means because the legacy is about individuals and people all over this world. When I came and became a part of OIC, I was homeless and jobless and felt hopeless. And like coming from the park bench, now having a house on Park Avenue, it's like a, a real, I'm really inspired by that. It's like I got angels that be, you know, just, 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 just watching over me. Every time I saw a trainee, graduate and stand and say, I got a job. It's the greatest moment in my life. It's half my life. My half my life has been in this with this organization. So I stay for a reason. Sometimes I wonder why. But then other times when I go to sleep, I know why. I know why. There are still millions of poor and unemployed and unskilled to be helped Still millions discriminate against because of the color of their skins. And there are still systems and forces, public and private, that constantly strive to manipulate, suppress, control, and fool the public. Solutions to these problems cannot be left to the government alone because government is vulnerable itself. But solutions must come from citizens who will keep alert and be ever willing to act. <laughs>